Test, 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 test. Test, 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 test. Okay, that sounds great. Test, 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 test. It's okay, quiet. That sounds great. It's quiet. Let's try it again. Test, 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 test. Test, 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 test. Do I actually want to hear NVIDIA broadcast? So I think that'll work for now. Nice, connection's nice and strong. Okay, I think we're about ready to get started. Let's post that we're going live. Test, test, cool, 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 cool. Okay, it's a little quiet. I'm just gonna adjust that just a hair so it's a little bit better. There we go. Okay, so it should be much better on the voice. Hmm, I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can't get this guy in the call with me. Okay, that works. Let's go ahead and start with these VODs. Can you link me to the VODs? Okay. Awesome, thank you. Let me grab these real quick. Take me to a new and mysterious link, no problem. Cool. Three, so there's three, four sets. No big deal. That's perfect. I think four, or four games at least, maybe not four sets. And then I'm gonna do my best to look at the chat so bad at it, but I want to be better about it because um, I've had that problem in the past. So I'm gonna really, I'm gonna try to go for it. Okay. Let's open one of these bad boys up. Let's do this one first. I'm gonna need to pull it. Out. <laughs> Where's my other one? No, no, 
Uh, YouTube, correct. I think. Hold on. Let me close that. Yep. What time year? Uh oh. I don't want to close that. I am not. Ah! Oh, no. Don't close those yet. There we go. Okay. I don't need this window. Tools, view, docs. I don't need. notepad can still go down here. That's out of the way. Alright, nice. I'm gonna put that here. Oh, there's a book here. Boom. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna take that and paste it. And it's gonna be right here. I'm gonna zoom it in just a little bit so it shows up. I'm gonna cut this out a little bit so it doesn't waste any space. Should fit real nice and neat on top of our game car here. Nice. That's good. Cool. And I want to keep that on top. Come on, you. And this one. Notes. Nice. Okay. Sweet. I think we're ready to finally get started. That looks fun. Can you go ahead and just chat? I want to make sure that you're still with me and then we'll get started. know that you're ready to go we'll, we'll start taking a look at these hmm okay sounds good let's take a look at this first game so we have Shulk and Toon Link before I say anything I'm going to talk a little bit about this matchup, Shulk 2 and Link. So what I like to do is when I do VOD reviews, I like to go in unbiased. And that means when I go in, I like to try to explain my understanding of at least how I understand how the matchup goes together. And I'm going to compare that <coughs> with what I see. Um, and sometimes what I see won't exactly line up with what I've outlined. But as long as it's successful, that's okay. There's always different ways to play the game. Um, I never like to knock people for doing their own thing if it's successful. But a strong background and how matchups work is always good. So let's see, my little blurb. You guys can see that. Eh, it's a little tiny. I can probably fix that. Let me make my. Let me shrink this down a little bit. Shrink it down a little more. And then I'm going to change my format font. I'm going to make it a little bigger, like 16. Bam. That should be a lot more readable if you're. I can probably make it even bigger if I really want to. Boom. Okay. Oh, yeah. That's super readable. Okay. So, let's talk about the basics of this matchup, right? So, Toon Link. <coughs> fast on the ground. He's floaty. And he has good drift. What does this mean? Right? What does this mean? Tink. Um, I think that Tink always will outspeed Shulk. Always outspeed Shulk. Uh, let's okay, I worded this very specifically. He will always outspeed Shulk if he is in green or blue. The easiest way for Shulk to get in is to commit to getting in when Toon Link presses B. And I'll explain that here with this handy ultimate. Okay, so if we look at Toon Link's frame data, right? He doesn't really have a lot of end lag on his moves. However, um, there's one notable exception to that. We're going to take a look at his special moves, right? So special moves, right? This is an extremely important fact about Toon Link's that special moves have high startup. So game plan, right? Shulk wants to camp Toon Link until he has green and blue Monado. Shulk will then, he like, what, what you want to do is you want to focus on 
controlling space and taking care of yourself until you have your mobility arts and then using your mobility arts to oppress Toon Link and force him to play your game. Because he has a lot of really good pressure when he already has special moves out when he has Boomerang or Bomb, but he has to actually spend time starting up those moves and that's your opportunity to close the distance and potentially hit him or at least close the gap to threaten him. Um, And I'm going to call this a specific term, special pulls, right? You pull the bomb, you pull boomerang. Anytime Tink does a special pull, that should be an opportunity that you go, aha, a, a chance to strike, you know? Like, it's like Street Fighter, where um, if Ryu shoots a Hadouken, and you go, aha, you shot a Hadouken, and then you go to try to hit him, by the time you get to Ryu, it's going to be too late, and you're going to get hit. So the key to this matchup is you need to be able to say, hmm, I think he's going to do a Hadouken. And then you jump, and you commit, and he goes, ah, I'm going to shoot a Hadouken, but you're already in the air. This is the important part. You're already closing the distance. And so what happens is, is you are actually in a position to punish him while he's in special lag, but this only happens if you preemptively committed, commit to jumping. Um, and so, like, eventually you get this kind of, like, nuclear standoff kind of thing where he doesn't want to pull a bomb because you're cl close enough to unreactable jump in and you don't want to jump in because what if he doesn't pull a bomb? And so this whole matchup, to me at least, um, when Shulk has an opportunity, has the mobility necessary, it drastically changes how the matchup works. Because if you're at like half a stage length, you could just commit with a jump in or a dash in, and it's just like you could just mess him up. Like it's super easy to jack up Toon Link. And this is his greatest strength, right? Is his pressure, his neutral, um, his weaknesses is disadvantage and off stage. Um, and so you really want to focus on making those things as brutal and as difficult as possible. And if those things happen, you'll be successful. If you can, if you can bully Toon Link while he's setting up for his oppressive special base neutral, knock him off stage and then go kill him at 40 with a forward air, like, that is how you dominate this matchup. And that's why I think Toon Link players probably think that Shulk wins. Um, if you don't actually manage to keep Toon Link out, this matchup's a pain in the ass. Toon Link's super fast. You're not going to be able to ever catch him on the ground, uh, which makes it di very difficult to whiff punish because after the special move is out, it's very safe. It has a lot of, like, lingering pressure. Also, don't think I didn't see that fall, Alma. I appreciate that. So, knowing all this information, right, knowing all this information about how the matchup theoretically should work is this dynamic of I'm fast versus I'm not fast, right? So let's take a look and see what happens. Go, right? Boom. <laughs> Right away, there's two things that immediately come to mind. For one, this Toon Link doesn't press B, like, at all. He's not pressing special at all, which is really bizarre to me. Because in all the experiences I've had with a Link player, they always love to press special and they love to pull bombs. And so either this Toon Link player is very aware of Shulk's ability to gap close and wants to sense him out first, or he just isn't the player that likes to press B. I have an important corollary to add to the gameplay. If Tink doesn't special pull, Shulk does not need a mobility art. Your sword is big enough that you don't have to worry about it. The so like the problem is is that it's difficult to close the gap and protect yourself at the same time if he's already got spe specials out. But if he's not pulling specials like this, there's not really any particular hurry. And we see kind of a different matchup unfold. So instead, we're going to take a look at it from that perspective. We're going to forget about this idea of, of special pulls and bombs and all the, the push-pull, like all that. We're going to put that on the back burner for just a second while we talk about what happens instead, right? Because it's not always bad. It's not always bad that this, this occurs. Okay. <laughs> don't like this. Okay, so we're going to take a look at this. Shulk's startup is really bad, right? Like, it's super terrible. So, as a general rule of thumb, as a general rule of thumb, if you're approaching, you really don't want to be trying to hit people if you're drifting forward. So, like, this fair here... 
right here. You notice that you're in the startup of this forward air, and you're like trying to hit Toon Link as if he's over here still. But by the time, by the time you've done that, you're like 10 frames late, and you're gonna get stuck. So the correct play here is, if I'm gonna, if I could scooch back just a couple frames, right? At this distance, right? You're both running towards each other. Why continue to drift forward at all? This is a perfect opportunity to do what is, in my opinion, how you're supposed to be using a sword in neutral, right? Um, you want to take your sword, instead of drifting forward, landing here and swinging at where Toon Link is right now, you should respect his incredibly good ground speed and ability to close the gap. Stop drifting forward. Instead, go straight up, come straight down. Or, better yet, since you don't know what he's going to do yet, jump straight up and drift backwards. This means that by the time you're actually on the ground, you are guaranteeing that the startup of your move is going to happen. Your big sword doesn't actually matter until the hitbox comes out. So when you put yourself in these situations where you, it's like the risk reward is in balance, right? So let's say I jump forward and I swing. There's two things that happen. Either he's still over here and I pressure his shield or he runs forward and now I overextend and I get hit. This situation's not very good because there's a good a good outcome and a bad outcome that like is bad for you. So let's compare that with the other suggestion that I tried. Instead of jumping forward, we jump straight up and maybe fair on the way down or drift back and fair. Toon Link can't get to us in time if we do that. So instead we have two options. He doesn't run forward. I swing with a fair. I don't get punished. This is not good or bad. It's a neutral outcome. The second option, I jump straight up and down and fair and he does commit to coming in and I stuff him with my fair because I press the button farther away. And instead, so instead of a good option and a bad option, we replace that with a neutral decision that is a good option and a neutral option that doesn't cost you anything. And so I think it's really important that when you play neutral as show, you are always using the second option. You should always be willing to give up opportunities to hit your opponent in order to skew the risk reward further in your favor. I will gladly sit here and safely space out of their burst range to where my sword will only hit them if they run at me. Because this means that if they don't run at me, I can't get punished. And if they do run at me, they get hit. This is exactly how Nico plays. This is exactly how Komei plays. And if you want to understand how do I keep out characters with less reach than me, this is the number one most vital sorty tip that you could ever get as a player. Like, if you just follow this one secret gamer tip, you will magically do way better as a sortie. Because the purpose of the sword is not actually to hit them. You don't, you don't actually want to go over there and hit them. Because what happens if they run at you and now you overextend? Instead, you want to use your sword to control space, right? And Shulk has more range than usual, but also a lot of startup. And so him in particular has really warped like effects for this you know if you're playing lucina yeah you could probably approach a little bit and like react to the fact that they're running towards you with the forward air you can do that shulk doesn't really have that luxury like his moves are very slow and so you have to commit ahead of time to am i going to go over there and, and call out him doing nothing or do i not have enough information and i'm going to safely control space and only punish the aggressive option even if the reward isn't potentially as good because like a draw uh, like a straight down forward air is not as rewarding as an approaching one it doesn't matter it doesn't matter forget the punishment forget optimizing stuff don't worry about those things because they don't matter what does matter is winning neutral and getting the hit you should always be playing like you're going to three stock somebody without getting touched and if you're not playing that way you need to figure out how to change your game plan to do so because when you play like that it means that you are always capable of coming back from any deficit possible. You could be down three, st two stocks and 100%. And if you are able to play, like you can three stock your opponent without getting touched, it does not matter. So it goes to show, or it goes to say, why play any differently when you aren't behind? Why play any differently when you have a lead? That should always be your default way when you play. You should always be trying to strive for that. How can I play neutral so that I three stock them and I don't get hit? If you don't have a plan that doesn't involve trading blows, you need to rethink how you play neutral. You need to rethink your decision making. Because otherwise, you're, just, you're, not, you're not doing something sustainable. 
You know, like you're not you're not setting yourself up for success. You have to have a plan that allows you to think about what your opponent is doing and allows you to 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 adjust without losing neutral for it. Because um, in the first situation where you drift forward, you can adjust to overextending, but you already took the damage. In the second situation, if I sit here and fair and they don't approach four times, that tells me a lot about whether they want to approach me or not. And so the next time, if I do approach with a fair, I have a lot more information telling me that's a good decision to say, hey, this player is really reluctant to push. So I can be more aggressive, confident in the knowledge that I won't get stuffed. And if I get stuffed anyway, that's fine. Who cares? You made an informed decision. It's not inherently bad to lose a neutral interaction. What's bad is losing a neutral interaction because your risk reward sucks and you like didn't really think about a way to make it safer or collect information first. You're just like, well, I'll just do this. This is autopiloting. It's very dangerous. Let's take another look at this interaction, right? And then we'll move on. So again, if you get stuck, what happens? We're a pause right here. This is the second time I've seen you do this. You are. This goes back to that risk reward idea, right? So we're gonna pull out my notepad. All right, we're gonna talk about this. We're gonna go. Um, I'm gonna write down actually what I talked about previously. Also can't hear me talk at all when the game is playing is that because the volume of the game is too loud if so i can turn it down that's no big deal here let me um hold on let me like adjust this a little bit there we go okay you should probably be able to hear me a little better and then i'm also going to turn the game down so ever so ever so slightly to like 16 or 17 there we go okay i'm gonna run the clip just for a second so you can compare the volume is that is that more visible? Oh wait, no, that makes sense. It's not the Elgato; it's the desktop audio. Let me let me turn let me turn the desktop audio down. That should make a huge difference. Sorry, I'm used to the audio coming from um, my game, right? From the from the client. I'm not used to doing a YouTube video volume. Okay, cool. So that's good. It's a good thing I did all that talking while the game was paused. Moments for reflection. Anyway, so we were talking about this idea, right? As a default op option in neutral. Use your sword to control space, not to hit your opponent. Hitting your opponent is the mix-up. Controlling space is the default. Always remember that, and you will make better decisions in neutral, if you have a sword. If you don't have a sword, there are different rules. That's okay. Different rules are okay for different tool sets. Let's go back to the beginning, right? This happens twice. Look at this. Look at this. Unforced mistakes. Okay, so the forward smash, right? If you're trying to cover options, this forward smash, it's very easy to tell you what option this covers. This covers, oh, I missed a tech. I'm going to roll in. This is what that forward smash covers. There's a really big problem I have right here. Um, the first time I didn't care, the second time tells me it's a bad player habit. I immediately can see that, and it's something that makes me... It makes it really difficult to beat someone who is attentive if they notice behaviors like this. So I'm going to describe why it's a problem. You are covering roll-in. It only covers roll-in. Is your reward good if you cover roll-in? Yeah, sure. But you're also not covering miss tech, tech in place, get up attack, or roll out. And what's more, since you're holding the smash and not just covered buffered roll-in, that means that every other guess that's wrong will get you punished. And he grabs you immediately after this. So you need to be really careful about making these kind of decisions when you don't have information. So how many seconds are we into this set? We are eight seconds into this game. You know nothing about this player. You do not know anything about this player unless you've been playing them a whole bunch. And this is a replay. If this is a replay where you played the guy 20 times beforehand, then fine, whatever you made, you went for something and maybe he adapted. I'm assuming that you have never played this person ever, or you have almost no experience playing this specific player, because otherwise this advice won't make much sense. But if that is the situation, then this advice will be very relevant and make a lot of sense. Don't make really committal options happen like this if you don't have information. 
you need to like watch the Toon Link panic roll in at least a couple times before you start throwing this stuff out. You can't just cover it right away because it's a default thing. Remember what we were talking about, how if it's your default option and you're wrong, then you get punished. You need to have a neutral that revolves around good outcome, neutral outcome. You can't base neutral off of good outcome, bad outcome. No, it's not sustainable. It's not sustainable. And that's not a knock, you know, like that's a hard. How do you how do you make neutral always safe? You can't. There's always some amount of risk. That being said, this is clearly not an appropriate amount of risk. Whether he's good at punishing you about it doesn't matter. Because if this Toon Link was a good player, you would be taking like 40% off of this mistake. Just because you didn't doesn't mean you shouldn't identify this as something that can be corrected. Okay, so you hold forward smash, even on Wi-Fi probably, you get grabbed. Cool. Let's move ahead a little bit farther, right? And the same thing happens, right? You overcommit so hard to this idea of, oh, I'm going to catch the roll in. Like, what information has your opponent given you that they're going to roll in? Like, how do you actually know? If you don't know, why are you committing this hard to covering only that option? There's so many ways to cover roll in that can give you similar reward without the risk of getting hit otherwise. Like, why not just do a down tilt? Why not just do a down tilt or a dash attack or a nair or literally anything or down air? I don't care. It doesn't matter. Do a up tilt for all I care. But a charged forward smash that hopes he rolls in is just giving your opponent an opportunity to start their desired combo on you. Like, this is such a, a decision that could potentially have really disastrous ramifications for your durability in a set. Um, and I'm going to describe it like this. Don't use committal options in neutral without information. It is not enough to say, if, if you do it once, because you're like, eh, they'll roll in. You know what? Go for it. You know what? I, who am I to say you can't do that? You know, like, maybe it'll work. 25 damage, you know? Cool. Um, although, if you if that were me, like, I could just use a Nair to cover the roll in, and the Nair combos into forward smash. So, there's really no excuse. Like, there's always something better than just charging a Randy F smash, especially when it's not a kill percent. Either you're covering multiple options with it, or you're trying to kill them off of a hard read. And hard reads happen because of informed gameplay. They don't just happen cold. Not really. So the second time that this has happened, it's now a problem. And before this game is over, it might happen again. And at that point, if I wasn't ready the first two times, you better believe I'll be ready the third time after watching it happen twice. So you get grabbed again. Um, let's see what happens here. I appreciate that you're attempting to run away from him. Ah, yeah, okay. So, this again goes to that idea of punishment, right? Like, don't sweat always getting the best punish. Why even risk trading? Why, like, why risk getting too close in the first place? This mo moment right here. Look at how close you are when you jump. Right? You're like right on top of him you're so close toon link's burst range is pretty big man you're not going to be able to jump straight up and be safe here if he decides to chase you the to me at least if you want to be safe the best choice is to jump as far out as you can and just throw tipper back air or jump out as far as you can and then you do a retreating there either way toon link is faster than you you do not have speed art you have to always respect that he can just get in on you at any time. And because you don't, you jump mostly up, and you get stuck by the up air. So, like, this again kind of goes back to what we were talking about earlier, right? This idea. Use your sword to control space. When you stop trying to control space and you start trying to hit your opponent, that's when you're going to overextend and get jacked up. Okay, so we're at the ledge, right? I, I don't know. I, I'm not going to get mad about it because, like, it's hard. It's no, there's no reason to, for one. But, like, I just want you to pay attention. Like, these forward smashes don't have to happen. There are buttons that you have 
that cover similar or the same amount of space without having to commit this hard. I don't even know if you get punished for it. I would just probably lay off the forward smashes in general, like, especially because you're in speed art. It does like 16 damage. Woo, you know, like whatever. Okay, so you get chased, you get hit. Nice reset. Edge guard. Okay, I'm not gonna say anything about it. Everybody edge guards their own different way. I would have done it differently, but that works. Okay, the inverse problem, right? This will be a problem if you try to scale your play, right? And play better players. Sometimes you're gonna get handed opportunities like this where your opponent makes a big mistake, like a big mistake. This is a big mistake. He's at 8%, right? He's at 8%. And you could jack this guy up for this mistake. Like you could destroy this guy for this mistake right here. You could make him take 35, no questions asked for this mistake. And I can show you exactly how. I'm gonna go back to training mode for a second. This is what could happen on reaction, right? Unprompted. You don't even have to work hard. You could just do this. Um, where's my Elgato? And I'm gonna move that to the top real quick. Boom. Nice. Okay. So let's go to training. This could happen at eight percent on a tune link. So so not a big deal, right? We could do tons of damage to this guy without having to even sweat the detail. So let's see. Let's grab a tune link. He's over here in the brawl section. Bam. Okay. So check it out, man. When this situation happens, this is a no-brainer punishment. I can give you a list of punishments, I'm but we're going to start with the... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Why is it uh, really a... Really I set the taunt. I'm really feeling it. <laughs> I don't know. i got to go check my control configuration. That's weird. Maybe something's messed up. Or maybe this controller's messed up. I don't know. I just got it back from Icy. It's sick, but... Um, let's see if it works. Yeah, okay. Let's uh let's check that real quick. If not, I got a pro controller in my bag, no big deal. But I really want to show you like a couple of different ways that this could be punished cuz I think it's important when you get opportunities to punish someone that you actually execute the punish. Like I think that's very important. Um oh, that would explain it. The L stick. Huh? Where's my left stick control? Default. I, I, what? Where's my left stick? <laughs> Where, where's my left stick? I, I guess it probably shouldn't show up, but my, it was the L stick was using taunts last time. I don't know. I'll just, you know, I'll just pretend that I'm, I'm tripping and, um, cause I. I guess I wasn't expecting the L stick to have controls, but taunts were happening when I was hitting the L stick. So we'll see. Okay, so I need special grab tilt stick. Uh huh. Uh huh. I like it. Okay, back to training mode. Cool. Mm, my hands are cold. I don't like that. Okay. So, a little bit of a detour. Here's hoping it works. Rating. Nice. Grab a tune link. Kabam. Okay. Oh, let's take a look at some sample punishment for these kind of situations. And it doesn't matter if it's Wi-Fi. Dude, actually what on earth? I think it's like because it, it's being thought of as being held down. <laughs> I actually don't understand what the problem is. Okay. So, in lieu of a, a bit, oh, it's set to PC. Maybe that'll change things. Yeah, that probably changed things. Okay, it's been a while since I used this. Okay, okay, it was set to it was set to PC. That was why I was messed up. Okay, so tune links at eight percent, right? Here's a couple of different ways that I can make this punishment happen. Um, no problem, right? So let's say he's charging that forward smash. I can even set the CPU to do that. Side smash. Bam. Too easy. Okay. So he's doing this forward smash, right? He's charging. I don't care. Boom. 32 damage. No, zero risk. Okay, cool. No brainer. So let's say... Okay, you're going to reset? Yeah. LR reset. Up. Oh. oh, no. What the thing works? <laughs> hmm. Now 
my shield button isn't working. Not really having a good first impression with this controller. Okay, there we go. Okay. So that's one option, right? Is this this landing there? Boom, I jack him up. Okay. Here's something I could do something else. Like I could do like a grab and a down tilt, or I could do a grab and a This is another common option, right? Like I full hop, nair, dash attack. True combo, 25%, sends them up at a bad angle, right? Like look at this angle that they get sent at. It's not good. Like you could get you could do another dash attack. Like you can this is a good angle to mess people up at. If you want to be fancy and you really want to attack on the damage, if you see it coming, you could do something like this. There you go. Bam, that's true. Right there, I do a full hop and a switch arts, right? Full hop, switch arts. Switch arts to buster, grab, down tilt, or forward tilt. That's like 40 damage, dude. Like full hop, switch, nair. Pummel, forward tilt, boom. If I want to do something a little less risky, right? I could do full hop, grab, pummel, pummel, forward tilt, or like, um, I can do dash attack, all right? Or I could, come on, dash attack. Damn it. Gotta get used to the game controller again. There we go. So that's not true, but it doesn't matter. Like, this is also actually true. You can't do anything. That four combos. That's like 47 damage. So when you, I, I just want you to understand, like, when you're in these situations where your opponent makes unforced mistakes, this is not my terminology. That's stolen from Ramsey. Unforced mistakes, right? When unforced mistakes happen, like this, dude, like, this is how you win games. Like, if your opponent makes a mistake, just as it's important for you to avoid putting yourself in those situations, when your opponent makes a mistake, you have to capitalize. So that's what's possible, right? You could have easily done anywhere from 32 to 50 damage with varying levels of difficulty without really having to worry too hard. I, I would, I'm not going to say that approaching full hop nair to forward smash is hard. It's not difficult. You, it's really easy to do with practice. No, no one is going to say that that's difficult or impossible or hard to do. Here's what happens instead. So, like, you have the right idea, but the nair just, like, whiffs. <laughs> and you get nothing, right? This is a big deal, man. Like, even though you don't directly get punished for it, you can't just drop opportunities to punish people. And so I want you to really th make sure that when you are training, if you are in practice mode by yourself, right, like before you start playing, just come in here and practice so that when you try it, you get it 10 times out of 10. Like you're, if you notice, like I'm not really making mistakes. Like it's happening every time. If I want to do something else different, like I just practice until I can get it. Or, like, if I want to approach and then down tilt, or if I want to cross them up and then down tilt, like, there's so many options that I can do. And consistency, right? Having a plan, here's what I'm going to do to punish if this guy does it. So that when you see the forward smash, instantly, it's like a lizard brain, right? You don't even think about it. You just go, boom, a punish. This is not Shulk specific. Tons of characters can jack you up at 8% off of an unfo unforced mistake like this. So don't feel like this is all like magical Shulk only stuff. I could pull out Mario and demolish that dude and do like 40% for free just because of an unforced mistake. So always pay attention to be ready to capitalize on those. So let's see what happens, right? You grab him. Okay, he did nothing and you grabbed him anyway. That's cool. But a grab is not 40 damage. A grab is like nine damage. So just keep that in mind. Like, yes, you got something out of it, but if it's guaranteed, why not get something better? Thank you for going to ledge instead of double jumping. Nice back air. Ah, uh, okay. So this is a small thing. If you're in this situation, right? This one right here. It doesn't make sense to overcommit. You're already on stage, so you don't really want to risk like going off stage. Oh, sorry, I gotta switch it back to this. So if you're in this situation, hey, chill, goose. So if you're in this situation, right, um, you don't want to like down air. Like if you, hey, don't mess with my screen. I don't want you to scratch my monitors. I still gotta trim your nails. So when you're in this situation, like 
this is where fair becomes an oppressive move. So instead of worrying too hard about like trying to space a downer to dunk him or be fancy, like just put the fair, just put the tip of that fair right here. Cause you know what happens if he goes low and then jumps back on stage with a fair or something, he loses. Now he's off stage with no jump and you finish the stock. If he beefy up bees, he loses the fair. Now he's off stage potentially with no jump. If he goes to the ledge, he can't punish you. Fair doesn't have any lag. Instead, you go for this. And so, like, not only does the downer not even come out, um, but, like, the downer wasn't placed in a position that was going to do anything. Like, it's not, it doesn't have any horizontal range. So how are you going to contest him if he does decide to come on stage? This goes back to that idea, right? Cover options in a sensible manner. You should either have neutral outcomes and good outcomes or better outcomes and good outcomes. This option had a good outcome, but also bad outcomes. What if you get hit? It just doesn't make sense. I also don't like this. Don't let him out of the corner. Right here, you know what I would do 100% of the time? I would say he probably wants to leave the corner. Jump backwards, retreating fair. If he doesn't, cool, he's still in the corner. If he did, great, you hit him. Like, I think it's really important that you use your range to force people back into the corner. Because, like, if I'm the Toon Link in the corner right now, I do not want to be in the corner against Link or against Shulk. I don't. Unless this guy is like, ooh, he's at 133. I'm a back throw and get the kill. That is situational. That could happen. But really, I'm just like, I'm in the corner. I don't want to be in the corner. This sucks. Let's take a look. He rolls. He rolled. I mean, retreating fair would have covered that. Not a knock. Just an observation. If someone makes it up the ledge... Why not? Just retreat backwards. Throw a forward air. Maybe they'll try to get out of the corner. If they don't, you lose nothing. If they do, you hit them and gain things. It's one of those situations, right? Neutral and good. Those are the things that you want. That's consistency. We're reset to neutral. Ah, uh, okay. So you wait for him, and he jumps here, right? If I saw that guy jump, I would go murder him. I swear to God I would go murder him. He has no jump, no range. His good ground speed that we talked about, right? This fast on the ground doesn't matter. He is floaty. If he jumps this far away from safety, you go kill him. You jump up there and you say, hey, you better air dodge or I'm going to kill you. And then after he air dodges, you kill him anyway. Those are absolutely opportunities you got to capitalize. Now, to be fair, you're running off stage, so maybe you just didn't expect him to do it. But this is like, this is like, this makes me salivate. This is this is that's how you kill people right there. <laughs> you do that that right there. Woo! Uh uh. I got a big sword, man. You're dead. You are in danger. You are not in a good. You are not in a good situation. Okay, so let's move on. It's 840. We've barely really covered a ton of these VODs. Understand, I ask for up to 20 minutes of VODs. We don't have to use them. If I can take three minutes of your gameplay and give you six different things to work on, and then you come back in two weeks and you're massively better at those six things, why do I need to look at 20 minutes of VODs when we can talk about immediate granular things that can drastically affect your decision making in your play. Okay. So, we're let's make sure I'm caught, caught up to speed on my notes, right? So, use your sword to control space. Don't use committal options in neutral without information. Uh, what else did we talk about? We talked about I guess the third time the third thing we talked about was also controlling space. Um, no have a plan for unforced mistakes. Always. Not a not optional. Always have a plan. Understand how your character does damage. Notice opportunities to apply it and ruthlessly destroy your opponent. There is no time to flounder. You just have to execute. You just have to go do it and go jack them up. Hey, get off my stuff. Get, 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 get. The butthole. Oh, okay. So. That'll work. Have a plan for unforced mistakes. Sounds good. Let us continue. What happens? 
Eh, okay, sure. Sure, whatever. Nice punish. No jump. Please kill him. Please. Oh, my God. Okay. Please. He has no options. Just kill him. Air Slash is the size of a bus. If you want a quick tip for how to stay off stage farther, don't do this. This thing right here. Right there. Do not do this. Right here. Here's the secret. How do you stay off stage longer to be scary? Don't do this. Instead, do this. Okay, I want you to notice the difference, right, between, holy shit. Yo, thanks for 10 bucks, Sandball. I know it's been a while since I streamed. Um, school's been kicking my ass, right? So I'm really, I'm actually, I started, I want to do more coaching sessions like this. So hopefully I'll actually have an opportunity to start doing a lot more of these. Um, but anyway, I am grateful. Goose is somewhere. I got to bring back Goose Cam, man. I'm, I'm happy with my current arrangement. I got a new graphics card, and, like, it, it like, cuts me out. It's great. I think it's, it, it's a good use of the space. But anyway, so, like, instead of running off in fair, like, if you run off in fair, now you're out of time, right? You're at, you don't have any time to edge guard anymore. You can do a fair, maybe another fair, and then you got to recover. Like, you don't have choice. But if I jump and I fair... Like, I have so much more time in how I choose to recover. I have so much more flexibility. And I can cover the space for so much longer. Also, you should definitely learn how to do that. Drop zone air slash is like super busted. No, I, I remember that. Um, I'm grateful. But yeah, so like, when this situation happens, right? This is this is literally like the Shulk optimal option. Like you want to know like why Shulk is terrifying? It's right here. Throw him in the air. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. I have no jump off stage against Shulk. This is literally like a death sentence. Like you don't you don't come back. It doesn't matter what he does. You're dead. You just die at this point. He is dead. He cannot do anything. Ah, oh, crap. You're right. Okay, so I'm going to go back, right? I'm going I'm to say all the emphasis again. This uh, this thing right here, right? The back throw. Cool, I did the back throw. The jump. The jump is stripped. It's gone. Off stage. No jump. This is terror zone. You wonder why people complain about this character. This is why people complain about this character. Because when a good Shulk player strips your jump like this, you are literally screwed. You're just, you have no options. You can't do anything. I can force you to air dodge and still kill you afterwards before you can get to the stage. You cannot do anything. It sucks. This is the worst case scenario to be in. And most of the time it happens, you just die. I refer to situations like this as extreme advantage. It's a very specific plan, right? So what is extreme advantage? Ugh, you're misbehaving. What is extreme advantage? I'm going to describe it very simply. Extreme advantage is where your opponent is out of options and you can force them to make an immediate decision where guessing wrong results in life or death or it doesn't matter and they die anyway. He is out of options. He does not get a choice anymore. You have to capitalize on this moment. So what should you do? I'll tell you what I would do. I would run up here and I would go hit him. I would turn on Smash R and I would just go hit him. And then if he air dodges, that's fine. I'll just hit him again because I have a time to swing a second time. Or I'll jump, wait for him to air dodge, and then go hit him. Like, he has no options. He has to die here. This is part of the reason why you play this character. You play Shulk for this situation. If you see the situation and don't do anything, you should go play a different character. Like Roy, who doesn't go off stage. Because why are you even playing the character? This is what you should live for. You should be salivating like a dog with a juicy bone. Be like, oh, you have no jump off stage. Oh, 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 yes. Like, that's how you should feel. You should be excited, you know. Like you're this hound dog, right, on the hunt for the king. Okay, so what happens? You run off in fair. Immediately, nothing's really happened. His drift speed hasn't changed. He's still in tumble. He has no jump. And you space this fair, and, like, it doesn't really cover anything. 
I guess it covers him drifting in. But you could have covered this. Like, you can get closer to him. He still can't hit you. He doesn't have a burst option anymore. He's not in the air. So what happens? This kind of happens. Okay, so he panics and upbees. You could have killed him by, like, going off stage, right? You could have fixed it. Immediately just, just go back to the ledge quick. Like, oh, he, got, he went above me. I'm going to run off. Oh, he got above me. Snap. And now you can be right here and kill him for it, right? You gotta, you gotta understand. Like, if he does get past you, you want to make sure that you get back to the, like, to the, the ledge ASAP. Forget about trying to hit him. Like, it's not gonna happen. Just get back up there. Never mind that you shouldn't have drop zoned in the first place. In my opinion, I think it's much safer to do a short hop because that lets you, like, look. If I do one fair, if I run off and do one fair, I'm gonna do this with the freeze frame mode, just so it's really clear. So if I run off a fair. Right, the first fair, sure, it's covered in the space. Cool. What about the second fair? Right, the first fair. Oh, come on, you. There we go. So the first fair, second fair, or the, uh, basically, right. So in this area, God, I wish there was an easier way to point it out. Essentially, like where the nair would be covering is where the fair is. It's below the stage. So if he goes high, you can't really contest him. Okay, now compare that to this, where I'm doing a short hop, right? So I jump, I jump off and fair. Look at this. Look how much higher above the ledge I'm able to cover with this same fair because I short hop first. This is huge. It lets you beat out players who try to get around you and go high. Now, compare where the fair is. Okay, stay with me. Compare the fair and then go back to the VOD. Where's Toon Link? I'm going to even move it over there just so it makes more sense, right? So this YouTube click. Okay, I'm going to move it over here. Watch. Toon Link would have gotten demolished by this hitbox with Smash Art on. He was dead. Like, it just, there's not, it's not up for debate. He just dies. Again, this is the happy condition. This is what makes Shulk players squee with excitement. This is everything right here, this situation. So, making sure that you jump off and not just running off lets you throw out a second fair if you're wrong at a height that matters. Or your air slash, look at your air slash. You're below him. But just barely. And this could have been corrected, right? This could have been fixed. Look how much higher off the ground I am because I reacted to him going high and cover recovered. Because I have that extra two or three blocks of height. Okay, again, where did Toon Link go? Right? Like, it's not a perfect recreation, of course, obviously. Um, it probably needs to be a little smaller to be more accurate like that. But, like, compare these two images, right? Like, look how much higher Shulk goes when you jump off instead of run off. And I really want you to make sure that you think about that. Because the goal is, if I make a mistake, I still want to be able to swing twice. So, plan for it. You know? Plan for it. Okay. I got about five minutes left of time with you. I want to give you some time to ask me any questions you have before we wrap up. So to clarify, we talked about controlling space in neutral, not using committal options like forward smash on roll in unless you have information that tells you they do them and work on your own punish game so that when your opponent gives you those opportunities, you capitalize. I'm also going to add to that. Uh, I'm going to move my little panel here so I have a little bit more room. And then when I'm done, anybody that's in the chat, because I got six viewers, I will also open it up to open questions that if anybody has questions on this content, I will ask, answer that as well. Um, no problem. Because, like, the goal for me is to make this sustainable, and I want to have a process for revision. So if anybody has any thoughts or questions, like, I will answer those in a Q&A shortly afterwards before I wrap up. Okay, so the last thing that we're going to talk about, right? When you are in extreme advantage, when you're, when you're edge guarding somebody, right? Consider, always, always prefer to jump off to edge guard rather than doing a drop zone. You never know when you need an opportunity to strike twice. Ah, the Discord call audio going to the stream. 
Sure. Well, I'm not. I'm not playing the uh, the content anymore. The video's paused. It's not doing anything. One day I'll be a real YouTuber and actually move my stuff around like I'm supposed to. And then yeah, well, like the person who's doing the lesson can't do voice chat, so like they can only do text, and that just makes it a limitation, you know. Um, I I offered, and they just can't do voice chat. So for me, it's one way communication, and they're talking to me via text. I can't get around that. Sometimes they're just not going to be able to be in a voice call, and that's okay. Like. This can be a productive session without that, even if it does increase the response time. So anyway, to wrap up, right? You never know when you need an opportunity to hit twice. That's my take on it. You're not always going to guess correctly in these high reward situations. So set, your, set yourself up for success by jumping off stage instead of drop zoning because that way you're in a position to where your drift downward and your acceleration are setting you up for an opportunity to swing again if you need to in a position that benefits you. Okay, that's pretty much everything I want to talk about for now. I think that these four ideas, right, these four ideas are plenty. You could take just these four ideas and go work on them for two weeks and come back, and I will have more ideas ready for you by then. Um, it doesn't make sense to overload you or talk about too much, and I always feel like coaching – as a coach, my job is not to like, here's how you play the game. No, my job is let me take a look at where you're at right now and let me give you information that is the most relevant thing for you right now so that you have a path for things that are tangible and goals that you can accomplish and make sense right now. Um, and that's why like, you always get more out of coaching when you have a good work ethic and you work hard and you spend a lot of time putting into the game. Um, but some people, if they just want to work at a slower pace, that's fine. But when you hire someone to coach, it's not like, ah, teach me about the game. It's, no, here's what I'm doing. Help me formulate a game plan for making my strength stronger and fixing my weaknesses. Because everybody's going to have a different amount of experience from playing with their friends, watching YouTube videos. Nobody has the same experience. And so in order to standardize your training almost to make sure that you're a well-rounded player, everybody's going to need different things fixed. I might not talk about these four things with everybody, but with you specifically, I think these four things matter a lot. And you would be much scarier. Like It's only two minutes into this, the game. I don't, I don't need 20 minutes. Like, this is plenty of information. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's my thoughts overall. I'm going to go ahead and open up um, the stream for about five minutes of questions, if anybody has any on what I've covered tonight. And then I don't, I'm not quite sure how to say your tag. Ananias? Anan, 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 ah, Ananias. Like anonymous. Ananias. Sure, maybe. Um, if you have anything that you want to talk about before I wrap up, this is the time to ask me that question. If you have any questions about what I'm talking about, what I've described so far, and like where you should be headed, essentially. <coughs> What's up, Goose? Ugh. Hey, just because you're big doesn't mean you get to run away from me. Mr. Goose. Yes, sir. What's up, Mr. Goosey Goose? Goose, goose, goose. Goose, goose. I can blow it up real quick. Do a goose can. Goose can. Pow. Goose can. We're super big. Yes. Yes. He's spoiled. And he's big. He's like six pounds now. Can you believe that? He used to be tiny. And now he's ginormous. Big old goose. Yeah, I hear your tail wagging. You probably don't want to be held, do you? Well, it doesn't matter. I love you. Okay. You can go now. <coughs> okay. Um... I'm going to go feed Goose a treat. If there's something in my box, I will answer it. If not, that'll be it for me. I think that was a productive hour. Um, we talked about a lot. And if you want to do more in the future, like, we have plenty of other content to take a look at. Although, it doesn't make sense to review content with your current level of skill in terms of, like, why would I watch another three VODs if I'm going to continually watch some of these things happen? So what I want you to do is I want you to take what we've talked about and go make new VODs, right? And I want you to try to tackle some of these concepts and ideas um, so that the next time we do this, 
you have a different play style and you make better and different decisions. And then we can adjust something else and tweak something else. And that's how you grow. That's the process for growth. Okay, I'm going to go get Goose a tweet, a tweet, a treat, and then I will answer questions. I wonder if I can make this like super big. Make this big, bam, like full screen, you know? And then uh, zoom it out a little bit maybe, pow! And then last step, I gotta take this thing, I gotta go, pow, pow! Nice, okay, hey, Goose, come here! I'm hoping if I shake it, he'll come. Come here! Come on, dude! Yes! All right. Cool. I understood everything you explained, so I didn't really have a question. I think that's fair. You're not always... Hey, will you stop pressing my keys? Yeah, okay. So, it's you don't have to always have a question. That's okay. I think that's perfectly acceptable. Yes, I have your treats. But now this is a public community event. Okay, are you ready? Are you ready? Okay, you got to stand up. You got to stand up. Eat the goose treats. Nom, 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 nom. Uh-oh, you dropped it. Get back over here. Eat the treats. Eat the treats. Nom, nom, nom. Yes. Little goose. Get him. Eat the treats. Eat the treats. Yeah, you're on your hind legs. You're so big. You're so big, goose. You're so big. Nom, nom, nom. Yes, you're such a big goose, aren't you? Pow, pow, pow. Yes. You smell your treats? A little tough. We're done eating. Okay. No more treats for you. Otherwise, you'll get fat. Okay. This... This concludes this coaching session. I am going to take this recording and it's going to be uploaded to YouTube. And that'll be that. It'll be available for anybody to take a look at it. If you're interested in doing coaching, if you've been watching and you're like, hey, I want my VODs analyzed. I'm trying to build a coaching portfolio. Please let me know. Currently doing coaching sessions for $20 an hour. It's like way below normal coaching price because right now it's not important that I make a living from it. I just want it to be worth my time if I do like 20 of them. So that's my going rate. But I want to spend a lot of time applying myself and doing this because like coaching is my career path, right? After I graduate, I want to be a coach. I want to be a faculty member on an esports team or on an educational group. So for me, like this is, this is like an internship at this point for me. Um, that's my thought process anyway. Dude, will you get off? Okay. Looks good. Let me adjust that back down. How? Bam. Where's my camera? There we go. Camera. Boom. And sloop-a-doop. Button. Nice. Okay, cool. So, that's all I got. Anybody that tuned in, thank you. Um, you guys have a nice night. And look forward for the bot if you need to see it. Please, enjoy yourself. Have a nice evening. I wish I had my closing thing. Uh, I used to have, like, a little, uh, like, ending stream square. I no longer have an ending stream square. I upgraded my computer. I got to start from scratch. So I get to start building all that stuff again. Now that I got some time to coach, I'm finally done with my junior recital. It's nice. I'm excited. Ghost, you're so big. You were tiny the last time we streamed, dude, and now you're a big kid. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, aren't you? Yeah, you're so big and surly like a teenager. Okay, good night.